Number 11. If f of x is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 3, and f of x is 51, then what is the value of x? So first, let's rewrite the function just to get things started. So we're told that f of x is equal to 51. So let's replace f of x with 51. So we're going to have 51 is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 3. Now, let's subtract both sides by 51. So we're going to get 0 is equal to x squared plus 8x. Now, 3 minus 51, that's going to be negative 48. So what we have right now is a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The constant term c is negative 48, b is 8, and the leading coefficient a is 1. Now, what we have here is a polynomial expression with three terms, and this is called a trinomial. And when you have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1, the best way to solve the quadratic equation is to factor it. So how do we factor this trinomial? We need to find two numbers that multiply to the constant term negative 48. At the same time, add to the middle coefficient 8. Now let's make a list of numbers. Negative 48 divided by 1 is itself negative 48. If we divide it by 2, it's negative 24. And if we divide it by 3, that's going to give us negative 16. Divided by 4, we're going to get negative 12. Now, we can't divide it by 5. I mean, we could, but it's not going to give us a whole number. So let's skip that. Let's move on to 6. Negative 48 divided by 6 is negative 8. 7 doesn't go into negative 48, but 8 does. And after this, the numbers will reverse. Now, notice that, well, let me ask you this. Which pair of numbers adds up to positive 8? Notice that 4 and negative 12 adds up to negative 8. But if we reverse the signs, notice that it now adds up to positive 8. And negative 4 times 12 still multiplies to negative 48. So this is the pair of numbers that we want to use. So to factor it, it's going to be 0 is equal to x minus 4 times x plus 12. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set each factor equal to 0 according to the zero product property. So for the one on the left, all we need to do is add 4 to both sides. And so we'll get x is equal to 4. For the one on the right, we need to subtract 12 from both sides. So x is negative 12. Now the answer that we have listed is this one x is equal to 4. So answer choice D is the right answer. Number 12. What is the sum of the solutions in the quadratic equation shown below? So once again, we're going to try to solve this quadratic equation by factoring. So notice that we have a trinomial, but the leading coefficient is not 1. So in order to factor this, we need to do something different. We need to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. 6 times negative 12 is negative 72. Now, we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 72, but add to the middle coefficient, which if you don't see it, it's a 1. Now, two numbers that multiply to 72 are 8 and 9, because these two, they differ by 1. One of them has to be positive, and the other has to be negative. Which one do you think is going to be positive, and which one do you think is going to be negative? Since this is positive, the larger number has to be positive. So it's going to be negative 8 and positive 9. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the middle term, 1k, with 9k and negative 8k. 9k minus 8k is 1k. 
our next step is to factor by grouping. And notice that the ratio of the first two coefficients is the same as the ratio of the last two coefficients. For instance, if you simplify 9 over 6, you're going to get 3 over 2. And if you simplify negative 12 over negative 8, you're going to get the same fraction, 3 over 2, which is 1.5. When you see that, that means you can factor a polynomial with four terms by grouping. So let's begin by taking out the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of the first two terms. The greatest common factor of 6 and 9 is 3. And the greatest common factor of k squared and k, it's going to be the one with the lower exponent. It's going to be k. Now, what goes inside the parentheses? To find that out, we need to divide. 6k squared divided by 3k is 2k, and 9k divided by 3k, that's going to be 3. Now, for the last two terms, we need to take out the GCF as well. And in this case, it's going to be negative 4. Negative 8k divided by negative 4 is 2k. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. And so this is what we now have. Our next step is to factor another GCF in the next two terms. That whole thing is one term, and this is another term. Notice that the greatest common factor can be clearly seen. It's 2k plus 3. So let's take that out. Now, the stuff that's going to go inside the next parentheses, here's how you can find it. When we take out 2k plus 3 from the first term, we're left with 3k. And when we take out 2k plus 3 from the second term, we're left with negative 4. So this is how we can factor our original expression. Now let's get rid of a few things. And let's set each factor equal to 0. So we have 2k plus 3 equals 0, and 3k minus 4 equals 0. Now let's solve for k. So let's subtract both sides by 3. And so we'll have 2k is equal to negative 3, and then let's divide by 2. So our first solution is k is negative 3 over 2. So let's save that answer. For the second one, let's add a 4 to both sides. So we have 3k is equal to 4. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. So k is 4 over 3. Now there's one last thing that we need to do. So going back to the problem, it asks, what is the sum of the solutions? So these are the solutions, and we need to basically add them up and see what answer we get. So negative 3 over 2 plus 4 over 3, what is that equal to? Well, we need to add fractions, and we're adding fractions with different denominators. The first thing we need to do is get a common denominator. So what is a common multiple of 2 and 3? 2 times 3 is 6. So to get a common denominator of 6, let's multiply the second fraction by 2 over 2, and the first one by 3 over 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. Now, negative 9 plus 8 is 1. So the sum of the solutions is 1 over 6. Therefore, actually, I take that back. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. So the sum is negative 1 over 6. And look at that. After doing all that work, just one little negative can mess up the whole problem. But answer choice B is the correct answer. Good thing it's a multiple choice problem. I would have missed it. Number 13. Which of the following answer choices represents the solution to the equation shown below. So looking at our answer choices, we can see that we need to use the quadratic formula. So instead of x is going to be y is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. I guess you could say ay squared plus by plus c. Nevertheless, c is negative 7, b is 2, 
I mean b is negative 2, and a is 4. So let's go ahead and plug that in to the formula that we see here. So it's negative b, that's negative times negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 2 squared, and then minus 4 a, a is 4, times c, c is negative 7, divided by 2a. So that's 2 times 4. The first thing that we need to do is convert these two negative signs into a positive sign. Next, we have negative 2 squared, which is 4. And then negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And then negative 16 times negative 7. 16 times 7. 10 times 7 is 70. 6 times 7 is 42. 70 plus 42 is 112. And 2 times 4 is 8. Now, 4 plus 112 is 116. So this is what we now have. And let's get rid of some stuff. Now, 116 is basically 4 times 29. So let's write it this way. The square root of 4 is 2. Now, our next step is to factor out a 2. So we're going to have 1 plus or minus the square root of 29 over. Now, let's write 8 as 2 times 4. And so we could cancel a 2. Thus, the final answer is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 29 all over 4. So therefore, answer choice A is the correct answer.